Interesting. Oh, there's more missiles here. Sad day for that body. Oh, there's a hole blown up in the wall over here that he did not see. Here we go. Heart restored to kinetic orb cannon. Unit locked in current firing position. <laughs> wow, conveniently placed orb cannon. That's crazy. Uh, that means we can get up here, and this is the missile door. However, I see a morph ball thing here. For a yellow door, which we do not have the beam for. Craney. Wrong button. Last night at Chow, uh, Angseth starts talking about some bounty hunter and how she blew up a planet full of space pirates. I told her I didn't believe in fairy tales like that. And she took, uh, took it personal. I find it hard to believe that one person took out an entire space pirate base. That's all. But if she wants to believe this Samus, or Bigfoot, or Santa Claus, she can. <laughs> well, joke's on you, you're fucking dead, asshole. Always believe in Santa Claus. UFC Denny's. Yes. Uh, I'm the only one left I managed to get out of the hive, but when I got to the ship, everyone was gone. Dead. I'm heading for that alien building we saw earlier. Maybe someone can help me there. Wait, something's moving down here. Hello? You seem to be uh, blocking the entrance here. Could you just, like, scoot out of the way a little bit? So I need to know. We have established in previous Metroids for many years, and by many years, I mean it was many years, but still, that red means that I can blow it up with a missile. And I have now been lied to this stu it's this stupid fucking door all over again. <laughs> uh, War Wasp. We know these things. Interesting that they show up on other planets. Okay. Well, I can't be stuck down here. There has to be something. Xenotech, kinetic orb cannon. Fire small spherical objects at high speeds. It's, like, so convenient that this planet just has those. I need to turn it on with a panel. Because this isn't doing anything. Can I get that from up here? Nice. Also, hydration check. Thank you. Also, if you're telling me that this game is big, it's kind of funny. It gives me 
like, vibes of, like, Pikmin 1 to Pikmin 2, and, uh, Ocarina of Time to Majora's Mask, and how they just tend to make a game, a new game in the series really quickly, that just happens to have twice or three times the amount of content the original game had somehow. There we go. I'm gonna shoot these hives with missiles. Alright, if I can talk more about the Nintendo thing right now. So... Uh, Majora's Mask was smaller than OOT, but still, there was a lot in that game for what it was. I mean, I can talk about the Nintendo thing. So... Yet again, Nintendo is shutting down the 3DS and Wii U ver uh, online functions uh, at the e or at, they said early April. This is not sending me anywhere. They said early April. So uh, I sent that information to Gamma. Uh, and she wanted me to go on my 3DS and this is not helping. I'm just going to keep doing it over and over. <laughs> That's not helping. Uh, can I shoot this? Oh. Okay, that did something. Uh, and I went back to my 3DS, because I haven't been on my 3DS in a while. But I already have my 3DS homebrewed. Uh, but she told me about a thing uh, called the H Shop, a uh, homebrew shop. And there's a tutorial on YouTube that I found to download and install it. It takes literally 30 seconds if you already have a homebrewed uh, 3DS. And it's a catalog of every 3DS game. Apparently there's one for Wii U as well that I need to, to look up how to install as well. Uh, but it's a catalog of every 3DS game on the 3DS H shop, and you're just able to to get them from there. Dark has been dead for something. Hold on. Dark has been dead for eight cycles. It's a long time. Uh, trace amounts of unknown chemical uh, present in the target. It has an effect similar to mummification on the, on dead biomatter. Further analysis required to determine the chemical's effect on living biomatter. <laughs> Elevators, huh? Yep. So, I downloaded the H Shop, but I say it's like a catalog of everything. It really is. It's a catalog of everything on, like, every region. So, uh, Gamma wanted me to play uh, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate with her for a bit. Uh, so, I got to play Monster Hunter for the first time. Uh, last night. And I have a picture here. Uh, this is a character I made. Uh, this is, uh, Chudler. Uh, my character's Chudler, and my cat, uh, was Gatolio. Uh, and we were fighting monsters and things. And now that I have played, uh, Monster Hunter for two hours, I can definitely say that Monster Hunter games are not my thing, and I do not want to play Monster Hunter anymore. <laughs> uh, from my experience playing Monster Hunter, for two hours, hello. Uh, you're not letting me scan you. Uh, from my experience playing Monster Hunter for two hours, is that, uh, what you do is that you have a sword, and you go on adventures to slay monsters. Uh, but the entire game is revolved around getting massive groups of people together in multiplayer. And then fighting a bullet sponge for like five minutes. Or more. And uh, that is not my cup of tea. If boss fights last a really long time, I start to get really bored with them. 
Because we were fighting like a big bug and it was taking like minutes upon minutes upon minutes to, to defeat. Oh, this seems like an important room. And I was getting like two shot every time. It was just like, I don't particularly care about playing <laughs> Monster Hunter. But I downloaded a whole bunch of stuff. There were some things that I bought when I was younger on the 3DS eShop and the Wii U eShop that I really didn't need to, and I kind of wish I didn't sometimes. Like, I had wanted to buy the Binding of Isaac Rebirth on 3DS because it was cool, even though I already had Afterbirth at the time on Steam. Uh, but I ended up getting that, and I don't regret getting it, because, like, I did have fun playing that when I would. Uh, but, like, that's there, and, like, every other game, like, any game that was on the 3DS, you can just download for free now. And, like, I suppose it's technically piracy, but in my personal opinion, if the game is no longer being sold... It is perfectly okay to go download it yourself through whatever means you have. Because you physically cannot download any 3DS games anymore. Uh, lots of eShop games did not get physical copies because they're eShop games. Uh, and when the 3DS online goes down for good, you won't even be able to play most of those things anyway. You can't even get access to the East Shop any anymore anyway. So it's just like... <laughs> just just do it. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I did get some a whole bunch of things. I don't... My 3DS is now upstairs. But... Uh, Dark Splinter. Dark... Uh, Darkling Possessed Insectoid Predator. The alien symbiote within the splinter augments its strength and durability. Threat level raised. Uh, but I was looking through random games, and I downloaded a game that I completely forgot existed. It was like a really, really early 3DS title by Ubisoft, uh, called, uh, Michael Jackson The Experience 3D. And it is a rhythm game where there is a 3D model of Michael Jackson dancing to Michael Jackson songs, and you have to... Use the touch screen and like tap and make motions on the touch screen to the motions that are happening on the screen itself to Michael Jackson songs. Hello there. Uh, so I played that. Alpha Splinter, Alpha Male of of a war pack, a uh, gigantic predator, very swift and strong. It uses ramming attacks to defeat its foes. Can I... Uh, please be in the thing. Freaking the... Sensor bar is not being a sensor bar right now. And when I get hit, it stops my targeting. Probably hit you with like a missile or something. Well, the moment I did that, bad things are happening. Dark Alpha Splinter. Very cool. Dark Alpha Splinter, Alpha Male of a Darkling Warpack, a gigantic predator with symbiotic enhanced strength, speed, and armor. Well, there goes my missiles. I would also suggest doing the same thing with uh, with Metroid Prime Trilogy if you if you want to. 
Because it's the best way to be able to play Metroid Prime 2 and 3 right now. There we go. Because I bought Metroid Prime Trilogy on the eShop before the eShop closed down. But if you do, if you want to play this, uh, play it on Dolphin or uh, download the H Shop and figure out how to do it that way. Because it's been—it was rumored for such a long time that Metroid Prime Trilogy would get the HD treatment, but it was just Metroid Prime One, or like the remaster treatment. It was, it was just Metroid Prime One so far. System alert: unknown item acquired. Alien technology has uh, has bonded to armor systems. Threat scan complete. No negative impact on suit performance. Uh, does this allow me to read? Enable the interface with door. Cannot translate text. Okay. Well, that doesn't help me. I thought that would help me translate the alien text. However, it doesn't. Uh, we need to go this way then. But I also had checked out a handful of other things. I mean, big circular rooms are the most important ones. Because not only does it let you download anything, and when I say anything, I quite literally mean anything it lets you download. Okay, well now we have, like, actual text from a person being spoken for the first time in the Metroid Prime series. Uh, do not be afraid, I am... O you Moss, Sentinel of the L Illuminoth, please listen, I hear, uh, of our world's peril. Long ago, cosmic a cosmic object fell to our planet, Aether, uh, exploding with great force. A rift was torn in time and space, and a strange power flowed over the world. Where once there was one Aether, there were now two, one of light and one of shadow, each existing in its own dimension. It was uh, the end of peace on Aether, for a new race was born that day on the Dark World, one filled with hate and terrible power. They were the Ink. The Ink are creatures of shadow and darkness, knowing nothing of peace or mercy. For decades we stood against them, yet we now lie on the verge of defeat. I'm just gonna leave this down here still. I'm still reading. <laughs> when Dark Aether was born, our planetary energy was divided. Half of our world and half of theirs. Should one world gain control of this energy, the other will perish. Before you arrive, the Inca had stolen the device from us. One that collects planetary energy with it. Or energy period with it. They have weakened our planet to the verge of collapse. But fortune, fortune smiled upon us this day, for the energy transfer module is now bonded to you. With it, you can help us. Help us restore our world. You're our only help, hope, Samus. Should we fall, the Ing will look for the stars for a new new planets to ravage and conquer. Your species could be their next victims. The Ink have taken the, our energy to three temples on Dark Aether. 
find these temples and transfer the energy from them to your own. I have updated your map system with the location of, of another temple. There is knowledge there that can help you on your way. <laughs> I have also updated your translator module. You can now access devices and doors coded with violet holograms. Many lands are now open to you. Prepare well for your journey. The ink! Now know you possess the energy transfer module. They will try to recover it at all costs. Return to me once you have restored the energy to a temple. I will aid you as I can. May the light of Aether shine upon you. Luminoth Umos, indigenous sentient species of planet Aether. Subject is Umos, a, sen a sentinel of, of the Luminoth, guardian of the species in this sacred temple. Wait a second. Yeah, that's it's hitting me. Luminoth, like moth, and they're a bunch of moth people. And they like the light, because they don't like the dark. That's why there's a bunch of tiny mods everywhere. Alright, I've pieced it together. Object Eidos is complete. This is a regional energy controller. Unit regulates planetary energy in this sector, and it's linked to the global energy network. I understand our mission. Uh, Luminoth lore translated. It is told that the Luminoth were not born of Aether, but of the stars. In their early days, we roamed the greatness of the void, bathing in the glorious light of thousands, thousand stars. We met a vast number of enlightened minds. Uh, the Nerkin, the Yela, and the Chozo among them. Each of them, we found, had claimed a homeworld and formed a deep bond with it. In time, we decided to do the same. Chozo mentioned Pog Moment. really is interesting that the concept of good and evil, light and dark, is like, is it's like the oldest cliche and like the most common cliche. Because that's really how, how there's conflict in, in everything. Like, there has to be a good side and a bad side, and when you really boil it down, that's even what, like, Mario games are. Mario is the light, and Bowser is the dark. <laughs> and in uh, quite literally the case of, like, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, that is also two different games in the Mario series that are specifically light and dark themed. And we just got finished with Tears of the Kingdom, and that was also another light and dark themed game. <laughs> pathway to uh, Agon. Beyond the pathway to Agon sector lies. But it's always bright lights good, darkness bad. Light Flyer. Light Generating Flyer. Target me uh, Mechanoid is quite durable. It can fire bursts of energy in combat. Can I kill it? I can kill it.
Okay. The elevators are very fast compared to the ones on Talon 4. Alright. Okay, so we're back here again, and I need- I was gonna come back here anyway. Uh, okay, so this is- this all stems from, like, the big boy room. Kinda. If I could, like, hover over this. So this is, like, the central area, and each of these goes to a different part of the map. I understand. We're on this part. I need to go through here. So, so far, we're straight forward. May you find enlightenment and peace. See, this is this door we found earlier. And there's that thing I jumped across before. And the pimples are, in fact, popping right now. Uh, let me tell stories again. When I say anything, you can download anything from the H shop, I mean anything. They quite literally have anything and everything on there. So, not only does it allow you to download... I don't... Okay, I do have this. I like download virtual console games, like all of that. This is my first E-Tank. Nice. Uh... They have all of the stuff from 3DS Ambassadors as well. So for anyone who does not know or remember uh, 3DS Ambassadors, there is a program you can download uh, on another thing. That's not the H Shop, but you can. There's a there's a thing called Wamibo, I believe, uh, and that has like every Amiibo file on it. So you can do that too. Uh, but for anyone who may not remember. Uh, 3DS Ambassadors. Power is power to operate the power. Uh, power beam can energize. Yes, okay, so that's another thing for later. Uh, when the 3DS first came out, it was priced, uh, really high. And then it's, it didn't sell very well at the start. So Nintendo lowered the price by, like, $80 or something. But they made it so that anyone who bought an, a 3DS early got into the 3DS Ambassador program, which gave them, like, uh, like, 10 SNES games and 10 Game Boy Advance games to play. But it was the only thing, the only way to play Game Boy Advance games on 3DS was to have an Ambassador 3DS. So, like, Wario Land 4 is on the 8 shop. You can download and play Wario Land 4. And, uh, apparently the original Mario vs. Donkey Kong was also another one of those games. So, like, I got really excited in the recent Nintendo Direct for, like, the, the remake of Mario vs. Donkey Kong. But if that remake of Mario vs. Donkey Kong does not have, like, new stuff in it, other than the fact that it's, it looks better... I don't even know if I would play that Switch, the, the Switch version. I would rather just either get Visual Boy Advance and stream it uh, on my computer or play it a different way because if it's the exact same game, I could just play it and save my money uh, because it's still a game that you can still play now uh, and things. Uh, final entry, Warrior Jathan. Uh Their army swells. The beasts and rogue machines join the ranks of the Horde, all eager to bring death to the Luminoth. Uh, the Ing sent these new additions to the industrial site to do battle with me while they watched from uh, from safety. Cowardly, uh, cowardly mongrels 
My only regret in death is that I did not live to see the day of their defeat. May it come soon. And like the entire definition of being able to download anything and everything from the H shop is not only does it have the ambassador games of Game Boy Advance, it has the ambassador certificate where what if you were an ambassador, uh, a 3DS ambassador, I just want to take a look around. It looks cool over here. Oh, wait, that's a secret. Luminoth lore translated. If you were a 3DS ambassador, you would get the games, but it would also download a video file to your 3DS, uh, which is just a three minute long video. And it just, it has like ambassador certificate as the, as the thumbnail, and that's the whole video. But then there's like text at the bottom that scrolls around saying, when more things become available, check the 3DS news section. And then it says it in like different languages and stuff. So now I have cheated my way to become a 3DS ambassador. I now have the ambassador certificate downloaded to my console. Like I've always wanted to have the ambassador games and now I can finally have them just for the hell of it. And I think that's really, really funny. Our search for a home took us through the cosmos. For many a great cycle we roamed, yet a place to call our own eluded us. In time, we began to despair, feeling the search was in vain. We considered remaining among the stars until a scout returned, with news of a world unlike any other. Uh, when we beheld Aether for the first time, so great was her beauty that we uh, forsook... That's not a word. For forsook, past tense of forsake. I've never heard forsook before. Forsook the stars before, forever, to live upon her surface. From that day forth, the Luminoth were of Aether, our blessed paradise. Interesting missable lore there. Actually, wait a second. Blow this up. There's a missile upgrade back here? Almost missed that missile upgrade if I wasn't looking around. And the other thing is that there's a section in uh, in H Shop that allows you to download kiosk demos. So, like, anytime there was ever a demo of something at, like, a GameStop or something like that, it allows you to play kiosk demos. But one demo in particular stood out to me that I had downloaded, which is the E3 2011 demo of Super Mario 3D Land. Back when it was first revealed, and it was just called Super Mario. And it had the temporary Super Mario logo. So I got to officially play the demo of Super Mario 3D Land, which was kind of cool. I mean, the music is slightly different, but like the levels that they have in the demo are like nearly identical. They're not exactly identical to the final game, but they're nearly identical. And that's like a really cool thing to like check out. Uh, creature. Uh, Lumite. Uh, photosynthetic flying insectoid. Uh, relatively harmless in shadows, powerful and invisible in the light. Target has been dead for 1.1 1. Uh, 1 deca cycles. Body has, uh, uh, badly damaged by sandstorms and heat exposure. Judging by the number of blast wounds, the target was dead for long before the desert got to it. Said these things were harmless, and now they're firing at me. Bugs. Agon Waste. Uh, 
uh, the eight shop is just so much more convenient than the way I was I used to do things. I knew enemies were gonna show up. Worm. Uh, sand digger. Desert-based tunneling bioform. Extremely well armored. Target exposed eyes to damage this creature. Don't do that. Because the way I used to do things is that there was a website that where you could download the CIA files for 3DS games. And I would download that stuff and then put the files on my SD card and then install the, ga the games manually from there. But I didn't even know the 8 shop existed until last night and it's just a catalog of everything. And you're just able to do everything from there. Which is very cool and convenient. So I need- I, I believe there was one for Wii U as well, so I'm gonna have to look up how all that works. Also, hydration check. Will do. Also, Big Shot. I still have that enabled from yesterday. Uh, I don't really want to get up, but I will, I promise you, I will do that later. I think I need a fast morph ball of some kind to be able to get through the sand. That's what I'll do a second time, just to be sure. Actually, wait, no, I can hold up. Go against the sand current. This feels like a secret in the making. Like missile expansion, something. Missile expansion. Conveniently placed within a tube that I can't get into. It is controlled by a bomb slot device. Energize the bomb slot to open the gate. But the bomb slot is on the opposite side of the door, so then what's the point of being here? Just to tease you? Just to tickle your hairs a little bit? I will just get out of the way. So I'm here. You can get up here slightly. Knock this down. And this is a yellow thing, and we do not have the translator for that. So now, not only do we have all of the different types of missile doors, now we have context-sensitive, very specific, I need this upgrade to open the door, door. Uh, I don't have ball jump, so I can't do that. Agon, uh, uh, bearer pod. Living storage units of the Luminoth. Hardly, uh, uh hardy desert plat plant form used to store, uh, useful items. Tough, uh, epidermis can be destroyed with weapons. I don't think you meant to type that. Good kitty. Hello there. I see something morph ball related down there.
Another big circular room. What enemy's gonna show up here? Cool. So are these actual space pirates? Pirate Trooper, Starfaring uh, Briand. Aggressive, well armored bioform, trained for combat and conquest. Sworn enemy of Samus Aran. Favorite pirates suffered a serious defeat at Talon 4, yet they remain a powerful force for crime and disorder in the galaxy. Their technology continues to advance. Even the lowly trooper has received numerous upgrades to his arsenal. A uh, photonic power scythe and quantum assaults cannon are now standard issue weapons for all troopers. <laughs> It's so convenient that they decided to crash land here, where I am. They still die in one charge beam shot. Wherever the heck they went. Um, trying to find platforms to get on. Maybe we should stop being a little weak baby. <laughs> That's cool. I see that back there. Target has a number of wounds caused by small explosions, most likely delivered by a portable rocket or grenade system. Can I, like, blow you up? There's no reason for you to be there. Can I, like... Yeah, just gonna grab that missile expansion. So, I have yet to decide how I'm going to structure these videos. Because it's very funny looking back at Metroid Prime 1 and looking at the videos I uploaded for Metroid Prime several months ago. Because I used to... I had a standard for how I would upload videos, which is I like to make videos that are 40 minutes long. And that contradicts everything you've been seeing on the channel for months. I think a 40-minute video is the perfect length for a video to watch on YouTube for my personal tastes because it gives you just enough stuff that happens in the video game and it doesn't you like the person that you're watching doesn't overstay their welcome in the video in my personal opinion but tears of the kingdom episodes were constantly hour plus long endeavors but it's really funny to look back at episodes of Metroid Prime on my channel. Like, episode 1 is 40 minutes, 41 minutes, episode 2 is 43 minutes, and then episode 3 is 30 minutes. Uh, and then, like, episode 7 is 40 minutes, episode 8 is 34 minutes, episode 12 is 32 minutes. But then I go through all of my Tears of the Kingdom things, like an hour long, hour 20 minutes. Um... An hour. I tried to make the Tears of the Kingdom episodes an hour minimum. <laughs> uh, just because there's so much to do in Tears of the Kingdom that I didn't want that series to go on even longer than it already did. Uh, bomb slot. I do not have Morph Ball bombs yet, so I don't think we need to be here. Uh, I can't do anything in this room right now, I don't think. Yep, covered, controlled by bomb slot. Uh, I am not a, a bomb slut right now. I don't even know how to get out of here. Was it here? Uh, I think so? 
but with everything that's been going on so far, I've only been, I haven't even been streaming two hours. But I, I like to have, I like to make videos 40 minutes long if they need to be, and I have them go longer or shorter if necessary. But typically at that point are like natural stopping points in the video or like in the game that I'm uh, playing on the channel. What is this thing? Uh, this is a statue of D. Chur, the child hero of Agon. Agon. Once a lowly acolyte squire, he became a warrior when the temple was attacked. All warriors uh, attacked. All warriors but D. Chur uh, were slain, leaving the boy as the sole defender of the temple. He served Agon for nearly a cent, a cent the cycle before being lost in battle on Dark Aether. I just know this game is eventually gonna get really complicated. So far what I am enjoying a lot more in these first two hours of Metroid Prime 2 compared to the first two hours of Metroid Prime 1 is that everything so far seems to be linear. I mean, there's some different places to go, and some a little bit of backtracking, but the beginning of Metroid Prime 1, the, the Chozo ruins or whatever, like, I had to beat, like, a boss, and then I had to, like, take the missiles or whatever that I got from the boss and go to the opposite side of the map where I got a thing where I had to go back to that room and then around, and then I had to go... Uh, into another place and then around again and then I did the boss fight and then it brought me to another place I had to go around in Th this is this is a lot more tame so far we have yet another circular room let me guess this is like a coliseum there's gonna be a boss fight in here It's not like I, I hate non-linearity, because I, I don't. I'm perfectly fine with, uh, with non-linear games. It's just that Metroid games in particular bother me with their non-linearity. Uh, bomb guarding, uh, bomb dropping Darkling. Enemy is utilizing your Morph Ball Bomb unit. Although its armor is strong, its tail is exposed when it's moving. Uh, its mouth can be hit when it's glowing. Alright, well at least I know where I'm going to be able to go after we're done here. Uh, not in the right spot. hit you with missiles and things. Second boss down. I believe this should give me my morph ball bombs back, which means I can make progress in the place that I was just at. Which is exactly what I want. Ball mode, press A to drop a bomb. Well, now what?
Do I just... Good. Uh, there's several other ways to go. Actually, wait, there's a black door and a white door. Those are like late game upgrades, if I remember correctly. No, we're going through here. It's one of those rotating doors you find at hospitals. Okay. Ah, oh, this is one of them energy things. Them energy resources. This is an access point for the local energy system. The energy transfer module has been designed to interface with it. Once it has, all of the energy within the module will be channeled into the local system. Hello, yellow thing. Lomanoth Hollow Projector Online. Automated message initiated. Welcome, I am Aisha, sentinel of the Argon Temple. This message survives my death as guidance to one who would fight the ink. A portal to Dark Aether lies nearby. With it, you can travel to this land's shadow. You must locate a Dark Temple a twisted mockery of the sacred place. Inside you will find the energy controller you seek. The temple door was held fast by three locks. The keys for the locks are hidden throughout that dark land. Your search will be difficult. Even the very air of Dark Aether is dangerous, and can cripple the strongest of warriors. In our past struggles of, with the Ing, we placed a series of light crystals throughout their world. They remain today. These crystals create safe areas that will protect you from the harmful atmosphere of the Dark World. I have updated your translator module. This is an automated message. How do you know that you're updating my translator module? This is literally an automated message. You can access devices with doors coded with amber holograms. When you have taken the energy from the Dark Temple, return here at once. May the light of Aether serve you well. Now we can go through yellow doors. So I don't do anything with this, because this is technically active, and I need to find the equil equivalent of this thing in the Dark World. Is my understanding of what I need to be doing. <laughs> 